Hey everybody, I'm here just to bring up one thing that I missed in this tutorial is that if you go to the main layout, please have the snack bar provider within this layout if you don't have it. If not, the snack bar is not going to work. Now, all the instructions I'll give you from now on are is going to work as long as you follow them. It's just that I didn't mention this in this video, so I'm just making sure that I do my due diligence and make sure that you have this there. If not, then that will be the issue why it's not going to work. So. Uh, I'll go back to the past version. Of so now I'm going to work on something a little bit harder. It's not going to be that much harder, but there are some more steps involved in this next thing for alerts specifically. So first thing I'm going to do is ask you to go to the nav menu and add a new nav link. We're going to do this in a different page just for these boxes. So all I do is copy paste this to this. You may change the, uh, the icons to whatever you want. I'm just going to keep it as is and just call it boxes. So the first thing I want to do is add a new razor page here and call it boxes. All their boxes, matches boxes, stuff like that. We're just going to slap it all in here unless we got to do something different. So what we're going to do today, or what we're going to do here is first add the, uh, the page reference. Slash. So now we should have access to that on the nav menu. We'll just assume that's correct. And then the next thing we're going to do is we're going to add a different alert. This is called the snack bar alert. So the snack bar alert is going to be an alert that comes out um, on the side. So I think you've seen this plenty of times Say you do something wrong on the page or it says, hey, you something failed on the page. A little like one of those um, alert boxes will come out, like maybe the side from the top, and then it'll tell you what's wrong. So that's what we're going to do here. Don't worry, you'll, you'll see what I mean. This is all, example is also on the Mudblazer component stuff, uh, Mudblazer page. So in case you want to check it out yourself, you can. In this case, I'm just going to do something very, very simple. So the first thing we're going to have to do here is add um, the service for the snack bar. I snack bar, snack bar. So now that we added that in there, we could now use it for our alerts. So pretty easy, just copy paste it. So what's happening here is that we're grabbing the alert and it's gonna create a simple snack bar. Now, I don't like this simple snack bar and you're gonna see why, and we're gonna improve it a little later. And if you see that this is not working, that means that there might be uh, something that's missing. Uh, normally, what you would have to do is make sure that in your imports you have Mud Blazer in there, and uh, I'll leave that. And in your program that CS, you have the Mud Services in there. That should be enough to uh, allow you to access this. If you created it from um, directly from the installation or something, then you should already have that prepared. So open that, and that's what I'm talking about. Now, what you're seeing here, this uh, how this snack bar is acting. Uh, it's acting real slow, right? If I activate it again, I can't add more. And it takes a long time for it to dissipate. Or, you know, it, it feels it feels very floaty. It doesn't feel really good. So there are two ways to change the snack bar behavior. Number one is you could do it in line. But to do that would be, uh, would take um, uh, some code within there. So you're going to have to do something like this. I will show you now. So basically what we're going to do is configure the uh, the whole thing here within I know it on this within here and this on click. So I'm just going to show you what this looks like here. So this is what we're going to change that snack bar function to so that you can see a little bit better here what we're changing it for. So it's, we're going to change the actual um, uh, the severity level, which is going to be the color of it. And then we're going to change whether or not the parameters are going to have some values in this case. If we add this into it, it's going to change it from the primary to the normal. Oh, no, this is the primaries for the button, my bad. It's going to change from that black color to whatever normal is, which is the black and white one. And then it's going to remove the close button. So by adding something like this, when you go to add to it, you add the message 
then you can start adding the parameters in there and the configuration of it of the of the of the rest of the parameters you will be able to change this in line but I would prefer to have something more uniformed. So this is okay if you want to change the severity level, let's say. That's all I would probably use this for. Or if you want to have the close icon in there, yes or no. I would, you know, it's fine with me either way. But I personally just don't like how it was very slow to begin with. So in order for you to change that, you would have to go back to the programs here. And you're going to add a little bit of code to change it on a global scale for this snack bar. So if I go to here where it says mud services, give a little space. Oh, no, I want to. We're going to replace this mud service with this other mud service that allows us to actually change the snack bar configuration. Now, this is how mud blazer handles configuring other things as well, not just the snack bar. Um, but this is going to take it on a global scale. So in this case, the main things here are that the uh, the the rate that it disappears will be much faster, and that you could keep adding more snack bars on top of each other the more you press that button. Remember, in order to have a snack bar, you have to activate it somehow. So that's why the easiest way is to just have it on a button some somewhere. But normally, what it's used for is if you have like an error or something, then that's when it pops out. Something needs to trigger it. That's what I'm trying to say. In this case, was triggered here. Also, this changes the uh, position. So I believe somewhere there is like um, newest on top equals false. So it's going to show it on the bottom here. Or somewhere, something like that. There's like a position thing in there. Position class, bottom left. Yeah, there we go. This allows you to change all this at a, um, at a global level. So all your snack bars will have these by default. And if you don't like that, you could always change it up later on. So, variant filled, snack bar variant. So, and just to show you, you know, what kind of uh, variants there are, if you want to look for the actual kind of colors and stuff you want, go to this page and down here, show code. You can look at what kind of colors we're going to get with it. So that's primary. So I think primary is just in the black and white one in this case. The blue one is actually the info one. It seems. If I open the primary here, yeah, the primary is the black and white one. So that's all there is on snack bars. Is, uh, the only real difference between uh, the snack bar and like the other boxes is the, uh, the other boxes that we saw before, the buttons and stuff, is that you have to actually add this into the uh, into the services in your whatever your startup program is going to be. And that's where you could configure it on a global scale or in line. But you do need to make sure you inject the actual service within the component you're going to use it in. So that's really the difference here. Now, when we get into the messages, there's going to be more steps involved creating the dialog boxes or the message boxes. So this is just for the snack bar itself. The alert boxes were far more simpler, but you had far less uh, control over what it does.